Today, we are going to be looking at the best player of all time throughout each role over the span of Overwatch 1 and 2. These are not going to be split up, meaning no off tank, main tank, hit scan, or flex DPS. It's just best tank, best DPS, and best support player of all time. Let us begin. Or actually, before we begin, we need to read off a word a lot of people don't know the definition to. I'm going to help you guys out. We're going to break out the good old Webster for a second. Opinion. A view, judgment, or appraisal formed in the mind about a particular matter. See, you learn something new every day. We're going to begin with tank, of course. There's been a lot of them throughout the history of this game. Varying in skill level, some had fantastic potential and ended their careers early, like John Goo from Houston Outlaws in 2021. Showed amazing prowess, then retired shortly into his career. Then others who make it unfair to everyone else around them, like Silver 3 from 2021 Valiant. Tank was obviously played a lot different in Overwatch 1, having the off tank allowed for plentiful amount of playstyles, but I feel the most consistently top tier tank throughout Overwatch 1 and 2 is Smurf. During Overwatch 1, he played a lot of Orisa. It's funny how people always talk about his Winston from this era, but he won Overwatch League in 2019 playing Orisa and fielded it throughout almost all of 2020. When it actually came to the Winston play though, it was obviously fantastic. The neutral understanding of where to position himself, bubble usage, target priority was all top tier. He wasn't the best individually considering Fearless and Gushue are still breathing, but Smurf was hanging around that top three area of core Winston play. Primal mechanics were always a highlight reel, getting absurd value from every activation. You're comfortable with Smurf playing Orisa, Winston, even Reinhardt. Even though he didn't play it very often since the 5'2", 50 pound gaming champion was on the team, Smurf was more than capable of doing it. In totality throughout Overwatch 1, Smurf's accolades were 2019 Stage 2 winner, 2019 Overwatch League champion, 2020 May Melee winner, 2020 Countdown Cup winner, and 2020 champion. Sure, he didn't play for most of 2019's year on Shock, considering GOATS was meta and Super was always in. He wasn't on the MVP ballot, but what makes him the greatest of all time was solidified more during Overwatch 2. As we know, solo tanking became a thing, and lots of tank players going into Overwatch 2 still had their off-tank, main-tank roles. Dallas Fuel, for instance, in 2022, they had Hanbin and Fearless because you don't want Hanbin playing Winston or Ryan, nor do you want Fearless playing Sigma or D.Va. Ideally, you'd want someone who can play everything, which is obviously not easy to come by. So when Smurf joined Soul Dynasty in 2022, people had confidence in his play. He's a champion. He's had a lot of success. But so is Fearless and Hanbin, who aren't really capable of playing everything as we all know now. If you watched Hanbin play Winston in 2023, it was on par with Fleta, and that's all I'm going to say. Smurf busts out the gate on Soul playing D.Va, Zarya, Sigma, Winston, Junker Queen, Ryan, literally every tank you could ask this kid to play. He was there doing it and mechanically great as well, dumpstering people who are known for playing these said heroes. Smurf was traditionally known for main tank, so this was unexpected to say the least. The core understanding he has of Overwatch allowed him to play everything at a high level. Bringing Soul Dynasty to their first ever tournament win, number one seed in APAC going into playoffs, and say what you want about APAC in 2022, but Smurf did a lot to aid in their success. This was exacerbated in 2023 where Smurf joined Boston Uprising, yet having another top four season, playing whatever is asked of him, and being the best Arisa player once again. I wasn't sure why Kalios was even on the roster, like Kalios isn't bad, he's underrated if anything, but he didn't really need to be here. Smurf can handle the tank duty and anyone would be confident in him playing literally anything. He transitioned into Overwatch 2 solo tank seamlessly when basically no one else could. That's no easy feat. The fact Smurf was able to be a highly sought after tank prospect in both eras of Overwatch is insane. He's been grinding and being on top level teams since 2019. Currently, he resides on Team Falcons, considered the best team on Earth. Before Champion Series started, some actually looked at Fearless not being on this roster as a problem. Why? I have no idea. Honestly, Smurf was an upgrade. And I'll just say it, Hanbin doesn't need to be here either. Team Falcons could just have Smurf and the results wouldn't change. 
Players like Smurf or someone are very valuable for any team to have, but Smurf has a tenure of doing this for like 900 years, being one of the best, and I think he deserves a lot of respect and is rightfully the best tank player of all time. You may have people who are better individually at certain heroes, like maybe Han Ben Zarya, Gushue, Winston, but Smurf is so good at everything, you take him over anyone else. If you put it into perspective, there's only two people I'd actually trust as a solo tank, and that's Smurf and someone. That's wild to even think about considering how many tank players are in the game. For DPS, there are so many prospects to look at for being best of all time. Prophet, the big boss, is highly deserving of it. Considering he played from Apex Season 4 all the way to Overwatch League's final year, but I'm not going to say Prophet. I think the best Overwatch DPS player of all time is Lip. When this guy joined Shanghai Dragons in 2020, he was completely overlooked. No one talked about him at all. Of course, his contenders team was horrendous. Blossom was really bad, but he joins the league, brings out the Sombra, and granted, I'm not going to say his decision making was the best that year. There was lots of wasted zero man EMPs, but that didn't even matter considering how fast they were built up. People were breaking out his POVs to see what he was doing. Lip would use an EMP, and then 30 seconds later, he was 80% to another one. He generated them at an inhuman rate. If you look at his tracking, it genuinely looks like he's cheating. 2020 was the true redemption year for Shanghai, and Fearless and Lip added a lot to this team, allowing for their first place APAC regular season placing, two stage wins, and top three overall finish. Lip performed well enough to be a rookie of the year candidate and a role star, but his path of destruction only continued. 2021 was his breakout year, showing his Sombra was by far the best on Earth. Not a human on this planet was even close to getting the value he was getting, even having one of the greatest Sombra clips of all time. A lip is eyeing up this fire mercy uh -oh. combo. If they're above they the edge, drop like rocks. He's going for it. He's going for the EMP. They're going to be dropping right off the edge of the map. He's going for his own life, but even till it's gone. He also pulled out hit scan from time to time and was world class at it. Ash, Cassidy, Widow, he was one of the best in the world. Even Tracer in 2021, the few times it came out, he was unreal mechanically at the character, getting immense amounts of value every time. Shanghai won back-to-back -back tournaments in 2021 behind Lip Sombra Play and their ball comp, winning a championship on the same lineup. In 2021, Lip was a top two MVP candidate right next to Leave, who ended up winning MVP that season. Lip did receive Roll Star though, and also Grand Finals MVP through a dominant victory against Atlanta Reign. 2022 was a weird year for Shanghai. Kickoff clash, it seemed like Lip in the back line were the only people playing half the time. Lip got crazy amounts of value on Soldier during Stage 1, then following that tournament, Sojourn came into prevalence, which he did have a slow start on this hero, but eventually became one of the best in the world at. Shanghai's playoffs performance was abysmal, aside from Lip's Sojourn. He did so much, like the last match was essentially Lip versus the San Francisco Shock. But once again, even with Shanghai's struggles, he was a role star and MVP candidate based off of his performances. Finally, in 2023, Lip joined Atlanta Reign, where they had one of the most dominant stages in Overwatch League history. A perfect stage, only dropping two maps throughout the entire thing. Again, on the back of Lip Sombra and also Stalker's Tracer, their performance was disgusting. One tricking this comp was their detriment, sadly. Playoffs for Atlanta was pathetically bad, where they bombed out super early. Throughout the regular season, though, Lip was once again a top two MVP candidate and received Roll Star, being the only person in Overwatch League history to have been a Roll Star every year they competed, and also being that high on the MVP ballot as many times as he was. His individual performances were always top tier any time he played. Learning about his flexibility, having that pocket tracer that's incredible, a pocket echo, the best Sombra player of all time, and being a world-class Sojourn, Ash, Widow, and Cassidy player. He's been doing it between Overwatch 1 and 2, acquiring plentiful amounts of personal accolades, and when it comes to DPS, I feel personal is more important than team, so the more role stars, the more MVP nominations, for example. Obviously, he wasn't shy of winning team accolades, and funnily enough, he's won the most out of anyone else throughout Overwatch League history at six tournament wins and one championship. He also played and earned these victories as well. It wasn't a situation where he got benched and then got a trophy for it. Lip is currently competing on WAC, probably the only team who can beat Team Falcons. At the time of recording this, those teams have not played yet, and I'm excited to see that match when it happens.
He's been playing a lot of Tracer, Cassidy, or Sojourn, and Lips still looks fantastic at it. In my eyes, he is the best DPS player in the history of Overwatch. Prophet is someone who does deserve a lot of respect. He did progress with the game as everyone else around him fell off, which is obviously not easy to do. Most of his success was from pre-Overwatch League and obviously Season 1. But as time went on, he was a good player, doing his best to carry his team. I just feel he's missing those personal accolades to be the GOAT DPS over Lip. There's still a debatable conversation for it though, it just depends on what you value. Leave a comment actually, who is the GOAT between Lip or Profit? Finally, we end at the support role, and I think this one is pretty obvious. Violet is the only person who even deserves it. This guy was a pivotal reason to why San Francisco Shock was so successful in 2019 and 2020, even 2023. Any hero you see him play, the guy was always the kingpin at, top level Baptiste, and I would still say the best Zen of all time easily. Nothing is more synonymous with that hero than Violet is. It was always a third DPS player on your team. His Ana was a rarity, I'm not sure what the reasoning was, I believe he just said he hates the hero. It didn't really matter how good Violet was on Ana because Twilight was on his team during most of his time on Shock, the greatest Ana of all time, so he didn't really need to play her anyways. What I really think is criminal about Violet though is that he only won Rollstar a single time in 2020. 2021 was a poop year for Shock in comparison to their previous two. When Violet played flex support, he was the best player on that team, undoubtedly. Of course, he went to DPS a few times in 2021, I still remember the Cassidy play, and also played Lucio, which was abysmal. People look at Violet now and can see his Lucio is actually really good, which we'll get to, but initially, it was horrible, like we're talking bottom of the barrel levels of bad. People were really skeptical of Violet being Shock's main support player in 2022, but he surprised everyone with his improvements. His Lucio all of a sudden became one of the best, leading that iteration of Shock to a lot of success, a grand finals appearance, and a stage finals, losing both to Dallas Fuel. In 2023, Violet joined Houston Outlaws where he was playing main support once again alongside Shu, who arguably people would prefer on flex support now. Shu really came into form to be a gross flex support player. Interesting how Violet flex support is a rarity these days, but still valuable considering you can swap the double flex at any time. Whenever Violet did that on Shock or Houston, you'd have a top level backline even still. If you're the opposing team, no one wants to go against the Shu Violet double flex support. The 4 DPS 1 tank lineup is not going to be a good time. Flex support is probably the most hotly contested role in the Korean space, there are so many top tier prospects, but finding one who can also play Lucio at a top level is practically impossible. Violet went from a piece of trash Lucio player to one of the best in the span of under a year, while also holding his previous statuses of being the backbone of San Francisco Shock's most dominant seasons. It goes to show you how mechanically gifted Violet is at Overwatch. Being able to switch right over to the highest skill ceiling main support and learn it that quickly. This guy has played in 4 out of the 6 Overwatch League Grand Finals and won 2 of them. It's fair to say Violet is the best player of all time, the only others who could be argued is Lip or Profit. Those are my picks of the best players of all time from every role. There may be people who are better currently, you can say someone over Smurf. Personally, they're in the same tier above everyone else. You could maybe say proper is better than lip now, but when we're looking at all time, you do need to take that tenure into account, which neither proper or someone have in comparison to who was mentioned today. Over time, I'm sure those players will build a case for themselves, but currently, I think this is where the choices stand. I'm curious to hear your goats in each role. Do you agree? Or maybe do you think Silver 3 is the best tank of all time? Make sure to leave your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching to the end. Make sure to subscribe for more Overwatch related content if you haven't already. If you're interested, make sure to check out my last video on competitive Overwatch's first female player that apparently had controversies attached. How wonderful is that?